Hello, I'm Mario Taniguzzi, Managing Editor of Canada's Podcast. Joining me today for Saskatoon's podcast is Natasha Vandenhoek, who is CEO and founder of one of the founders of Three Farmers Foods. Thanks for joining us today, uh, Natasha. Yes, thanks for having me. I'm excited to chat with you. All right. Well, let's just start uh, with just uh, kind of an overview. Tell me just what Three Farmers Foods is and what it does. You bet. So um, Three Farmers Foods, we are a brand and manufacturer of whole roasted bean snacks. So we are based in Saskatchewan, Canada, and we are our own manufacturer. We source all of our legumes and our beans. So we roast chickpeas, um, fava beans, lentils. Uh, we source them right from right here in Canada. And, um, and then we dry roast them, essentially air popping them into delicious, crunchy, healthy snacks. And uh, when did you start? We started our brand in 2000, late 2011. We hit the market with our first product, which was actually a culinary oil called Camelina oil. So it was a very unique um, oil seed that we grow here and uh, cold press. And so we still have that product line, our, our Camelina oil, but we got into snacking in basically 2015. Yeah. And and where where would I find uh, some of these snacks? Yeah, you bet. So we're distributed coast to coast here in Canada. We do all channels of trade. So you'll find us in natural food stores, specialty stores, but also conventional grocers. So you can find us in the Loblaws and the, you know, uh, Sobe Safeway metros of the world. Um, we're also in drug, drug chains, so Shoppers Drug Mart. And then, of course, online um, in yeah. convenience and gas stores. Um, and then we also service uh, ingredient and food service uh, categories as well. Hey, tell me a little bit about the, the history behind this uh, this company. How did it start? Mm -hmm. And why yeah. did it start? <laughs> yeah, you bet. Yeah. So we literally started as three farmers. So it's my dad and two neighboring farmers. And okay. um, and then my sister and I run the company. So I have a, an economics background and my sister is a Red Seal chef. So she's uh, the creative behind all of our products and our innovation. And so... We really started with this whole concept of adding value to crops that we grow here in Saskatchewan. So we are obviously a big agricultural community here. We grow these insanely healthy crops, um, these legume crops, chickpeas, lentils, fava beans. Um, but then we often ship them out as commodities and we don't add value here at home. And so we wanted to change that. And so that's when we we jumped into the manufacturing game, uh, first starting with chickpeas. And, and again, we wanted to process them in really healthy ways so that we kept the integrity of the product intact after processing when it was a ready to eat item. So we don't fry our beans. We don't oil roast our beans. They are air popped. So essentially just, um, you know, high temps, high pressure and just popping them like you would popcorn. And then we season them up with really uh, natural, non-GMO, gluten-free ingredients. So tell me a little bit about uh, the family farm. Where was that? Mm -hmm. Where is that at? Yeah, we're down in southeast Saskatchewan, so near the U.S. border. Um, and uh, we farm like a multitude of crops. So it's not just legumes. You know, we do wheat crops and um, and oil seeds as well, uh, Camelina, case in point. Um, so yeah, very, you know, a varied variety of crops. And, um, I think we're, are we third generation now? I have two brothers taking over the family farm and, uh, yeah, it's very much part of who we are. So, uh, I get my geography, right. So, so, uh, so east of Saskatoon, I'm sorry, east of, um, Moose Jaw. Correct. Yeah. And then South. Yeah. Yeah. You bet. Oh. Oh, okay. Excellent. So um, growing up on the farm for yourself and your sister, uh, maybe describe a little bit about what you did uh, mm -hmm. on the farm. Well, farming is, it's a way of life. Like, I mean, it's a job, but it's a way of life, right? So you don't clock in and clock out at the end of the day. It's just, it's just a part of every minute of every day. So um, I come from a big family. There's six kids in my family. So my sister and I, the partners in this business are the middle kids. And yeah, you just pitched in at every moment of every day, right? So um, we did actually both cattle and grain farming. Um, and so, so there was never a lack of things to do. We weren't snowbirds. My parents, you know, they're still on the farm today. They don't travel South in the winter time. There's always just plenty of things to do, lots of work to do. And I think that's where we, we got our work ethic from, right? We live and breathe this business and that's kind of all we know how to do because that's how we grew up. 
Yeah. Do you think there's a difference? You know, I, I've talk, talked to a lot of people in the, in the world of business and uh, there just seems to always be a, a little bit of a difference with, peop with people who grew up on a farm uh, mm. and the lessons they learned on the farm and uh, and now as business people, you know, utilizing those lessons. Can you talk a little bit about that and mm. what do you think about that? Mm -hmm. Well, I think the sort of the parallel there is it's the tenacity and the grit that goes behind farming. And I think the ability to just deal with unknowns all the time and uncontrollables. I mean, in farming, I, I mean, one of the biggest things that impacts their profitability and their ability to be, you know, a good farmer and grow a good crop is weather. And we don't get to control that. Right. So you got to kind of roll with the punches. And I kind of think that's what business looks like, especially these days. I mean, obviously we're in tumultuous times, you know, where there's pandemics, now there's inflation, um, talking of recession. So you are sort of at the mercy of the environment around you. And um, so I think those are sort of the parallels that I see between, you know, what I witnessed growing up on a farm and now what I'm experiencing leading this business. So I think it just gives you a sort of set of characteristics and traits that, you know, make you well equipped to to deal with those types of unknowns and uncontrollables. So how how has it been as a business and a, and a business owner these last couple of years, considering all the challenges that are out there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been tough, honestly. Like the pandemic had such a different impact on different businesses, even like you know within consumer packaged goods. So you know, as people were sort of locked up and hunkered down at home and, and trying to figure out, uh, you know, dealing with their own personal problems and the, all the challenges and unknowns that came with the pandemic, eating healthy and um, making good choices that way was not necessarily top of mind. They were, you know, consuming comfort foods and, you know, they wanted something that made them feel better and comforted them. Like, so it was like chips and chocolate and we know how that goes. Right. So yeah, yeah. Anyway, we didn't get the bump. We didn't get the bump that a lot of people saw. So it's been hard for a long time. And then there was sort of this beautiful grace period in between, you know, I would say spring 2022 and now, and now again, it kind of feels like the same as the outset of the pandemic where there's a lot of unknowns and consumer preferences are changing because of the escalated pricing that we're seeing at retail. And so, again, yeah. we're going into a period where I think it's going to be super challenging for a lot of brands to grow their business um, because there's just a lot of roadblocks up in our yeah. way. Um, now, did you uh, uh, recently receive some sort of investment uh, in the company? Yeah, well, there's been uh, a lot of investment in the company. So um, we've got a number of investors behind us. So um, we have a couple of local uh, investors here, uh, some funds that invest in Saskatchewan businesses. And then in 2022, um, Arlene Dickinson and her uh, fund District Ventures came in to fund our next growth expansion, which was our manufacturing expansion that we just completed here in Saskatoon. Um, and then we have... Um, you know, uh, EDC is a, a big supporter of ours. So, uh, so lots of government support as well um, through the programs that they offer. So is everything uh, manufactured at this at a, at a facility in Saskatoon then? Yes, now we can say that now. So um, at the beginning of the year, we we took possession of our new lease. It's a it's a 15,000 square foot um, facility here in Saskatoon. And we brought everything in house. So we had always owned our roasting and our seasoning components, but they were with a joint venture that we had. So somebody else was managing the day to day execution. So we relocated them to Saskatoon. We purchased our bagging lines. And so now absolutely everything is under our control and under one. Oh roof here in Saskatoon yeah so why um you know when when you set up this uh business uh, why did you establish yourself in Saskatoon and and not Moose Jaw or or Regina which would have been closer to the farm mm -hmm. well actually the previous facility is just outside of Moose Jaw so we did uh we did set up shop there but as we expanded and we started looking at different locations I mean obviously access to air travel right and airports for um, like food audit purposes, um, supplier purposes, all those types of things. Saskatoon was just a natural place to gravitate to. And then, of course, my sister and I happened to live here. So that was super convenient for us. 
<laughs> and it was really important for us to have our manufacturing and, and the rest of our team all under one roof as well. I mean, we'd certainly have remote workers, especially when it comes to our marketing and our sales. But if we could get as much as the, of the team under one roof as possible, that's what we wanted to do. And the majority of us are here in Saskatoon. Okay. So what's your, uh, Natasha, what's your background? Like, uh, what did you uh, do after le uh, leaving the family farm? Yeah, so I came up to Saskatoon. I have an economics degree. Um, so sometimes just to simplify that, I say I have a business degree, but business and economics are very different things. Yeah, so right. um, yeah, so I have an economics degree. I love studying uh, market dynamics, but everything I've learned about business has been through trial and error here at Three Farmers. So um, yeah, it's been a great growth opportunity for me personally. I'm assuming U of S? U of S, yes, you bet. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so uh, after graduating from university, what did you do? So I had, so I graduated, so four-year degree, so I would have been 22, I guess. I did like 18 months at an estate planning company, so sort of investment work, uh, managing a, like a portfolio of customers, um, oh. and then I jumped into this. So I was very, I was 24 um, when we started this. I had no idea what I was doing, and and I guess that was the beauty of it. I had I, some space and some time to figure it out. And so, like I said, we started with Camelina oil and then I brought my sister into the business because she's the chef, she's the product expert and she could sell it best. And uh, from there, we just grew it organically from the ground up. What do you think the, the biggest challenge was when initially when starting the business and uh, what was kind of some of the, uh, the biggest hurdles to overcome? For us, I think we had a bit of a different path than some, like some people would immediately say capital um, financing. Um, we had our three farmers as partners. And so they helped with that challenge and that hurdle right out of, out of the gate. So for us, it was just learning the ropes of this space, like consumer packaged goods, how to get how to get product on shelf. And then um, also learning the hard lesson that it's, you know, once you get it on shelf, that's just step number one. Now you better get it off the shelf for that retail partner, right? And so um, for us, it was just really learning all of the different components to build a successful brand at retail. So distributor partnerships, broker partnerships, pricing strategies, um, all that foundational work we had to learn as quickly as possible because, of course, we didn't have a background in this, right? We just, um, yeah, sort of happened into it, yeah. Or baptism by fire, so to speak. Yes, pretty much. Yeah, you got to learn fast. Ask a lot of questions. That's been my my motto. Just talk to people that have been there, done that, and ask as many questions as possible. Yeah, as you as you were uh, into the company and 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 growing it, uh, did you have any like uh, I guess any examples of people out there in the business world that that you kind of learned from uh, or learned lessons from? Mm. Well, so many, I mean, early, early on, um, well, and even still now. So again, speaking of people that have been there and done that, uh, Mike Fada from Manitoba Harvest um, I was a great example of somebody that, you know, took a prairie, a prairie boy that took a concept um, international, right, and was able to build a brand and he manufactured as well. So we've leaned on him heavily in the past and still do, um, because I think that's just the best way to learn is from other people's experiences, um, if you can. So, so he's certainly been a source of strength. Also, our, you know, our distributor partners here in, in Canada as well. I, we early on partnered up with a company called Neil Brothers. Um, they have a brand of their own, but they're also a distributor out east. And we learned a lot from them. So it was really about leaning on our partners and um, and listening to what they had to say and really reflecting on on their advice and and then making and forging the best path forward. Yeah. Mm. What do you like about uh, having a business in Saskatoon? Well, I love Saskatoon. I'm a prairie girl. I like space. I yeah. like space. So I live outside the city. Um, you know, so we're not on a farm, but um, we're you know, it's as close to a farm as I can get. Um, so without being a farmer. So yeah, I love I love the space. I love um I love the people here. There's a certain um there's a certain level of grit and work ethic, I think that comes out of the prairies. Maybe it's because we have to survive these harsh winters every year. I'm not sure, but uh, I just, I love the people here. And I think it's just a real, it's a great community. And that's been proven time and time again, this past eight months, once we opened our doors to this facility, I can't even explain the amount of interest and support that has flowed our way from other business leaders and, and community members here in Saskatoon. So 
I just think it's just a really great community. Oh, excellent. Now, obviously, being an entrepreneur and uh, you're quite busy in many ways, uh, it's a 24-7 job. Mm -hmm. um, how do you find a balance or is there such a thing of, as a work-life balance for, for people like you that uh, run a company? I think that looks different for everybody uh, and certainly stage of life plays a factor in that. Um, I mean, my sister and I are a perfect example of that. I have three children that are, you know, range from the age of seven to 10, and she is just about to have her third and all of hers are under the age of three. And yeah. you can tell we're at very different stages of life and balance looks very different for both of us. So for me, it's been like taking stock of where I'm at in my life um, at each stage of the business and personally, and then figuring out, um, what that needs to look like in that frame of time so that I can be my best self both at work and at home so a lot of that is just you know right sizing expectations I think making sure that you know how to say no when you need to say no not taking on too much and and just making sure you have your priorities straight and that's a hard thing to do it's easier said than done for sure especially when there's a lot of stressful things like the last three years that are going on in the business but my motto always kind of is, you know, as, th as long as things are good at home, things are good at work. So <laughs> just make sure you're taking care of your, the personal side, because yeah, yeah, it just puts everything into perspectives. Now, outside the family, I, uh, uh, do you have any like personal interests or passions that you like to spend time at? Well, I'm just sort of reigniting those flames, I would say, again, phase of life. But uh, so I love to run. I am I love running. Um, I'm like an outdoors person, which is interesting because I live in Saskatchewan. So it's like a deep freeze 60% of the year. But I love being outside. Um, doesn't matter how cold it is. So I love walking. I love running. I love running my kids around to their activities. Um, I love reading and I love podcasting. So um, that's those are pretty much the areas that I spend my time when I'm not in the office. Now, as you look forward, uh, it, it, you know, uh, into the future here, um, where's the company going? Well, um, hopefully global at some point, but we're very focused uh, in North America right now. So we've got a great following here in Canada. We've got uh, great status as one of the leaders in the Better For You snack space here in Canada, and we want to do the same in the U.S. So we're very focused on south of the border at the minute or at the moment. Um, so building out awareness and building out our distribution um, down there. But we really do want to be a global leader for Better For You snacking. We think that whole bean protein is the way of the future. It's it's the cleanest form of protein that you can get in snack form, low fat, low sugar, minimal ingredients. Um, and it can solve a lot of problems for consumers on the go. So we believe that's where we're going. Yeah, to the top. Well, I'm going to have to check this out because I'm on a on a personal training um, uh, mm -hmm. mission right mm -hmm. now. And and uh, one of my consultants, uh, nutrition consultants keep telling me, protein, protein, you need protein, right? And, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's huge right now. Protein is like, it's huge. And, uh, and we are a great source of protein. And again, without all the bad that typically can come with that. So yeah. Do you have a, a, a preference of favorite uh, from the, the products that you guys have? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I honestly rotate through my products. I'm a chickpea fan. I love our sea salt lime chickpeas, um, but I mean the fava bean sweet chili is kind of my my angle right now on the fava bean line. But honestly, they're all so good. Like you can, they're 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 functional. They fit into every day part salad toppers. Like you can really incorporate them any anywhere in your day. So yeah, I really jump around in terms of favorites. So all of this, all of them are are from Saskatchewan, right? Um, so our lentils and our chickpeas are largely from Saskatchewan. Our fava beans come out of Manitoba. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, yeah. But all in Canada. And what is it about, uh, I, I guess, um, uh, especially in Saskatchewan, what is it about the land that that um, is conducive uh, to raising this? Yeah, so dry. Um, so chickpeas and lentils specifically like dry climates, they can be very susceptible to disease because they grow very close to the ground. So what happens when you get moisture, too much moisture is it traps that moisture under the leaves, right? And it creates disease. So um, so dry climate is very, very important. And of course, we have that here in Saskatchewan, whereas fava beans actually need wet they need wet wet uh, climate. So um, that's where Manitoba sort of comes in. So that's why we source most of those beans from Manitoba. All right, wonderful. Well, mm -hmm. thanks very much, uh, Natasha, for joining us today. 
Yes, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. All right, that was Natasha Vandenherk, who is CEO and founder of uh, Three Farmers Foods. I'm Mario Taniguzzi with Saskatoon's Podcasts. I'm managing editor of Canada's Podcast. Thanks for joining us today.